So every month we offer two trainings. One is a mastermind where you get to network and connect with other roofing owners. And the format is the same every month. We have what we call a man in the middle. So if that's you, you could say, hey, I've, I've got my roofing company. You know, we're doing about 2 million in revenue. I want to get up to 5 million in revenue next year. Hey, congratulations, man, because it's funny, like how our, our it's, it's a little bit, it's interesting how when you are starting a project and doesn't go well and everything blocks in front of you, like then this is the end, you don't know what to do. And then like um, you let the time and the patience do the work. See, that's the big difference between doctors and roofing owners. To be a doctor, it's all based on academics. You have to make really high test scores and that determines what kind of doctor you can be. Most people don't know that. You, you can't just decide, well, I'm going to be an eye doctor. You have to make extremely high test scores to be an eye doctor. What's up, Roofing Fam? I am super excited because we are in one more show, Roofers Conversations with Leaders, where we present the latest trends and the leaders that are changing the, the, the path of the roofing industry. And I am super excited because this time we have a guest that we are going to talk about a topic that you probably haven't heard about it and we are gonna present it because this is gonna be another opportunity that you will have in your plate so you can get to the next level. Dylan McCabe, welcome to your show, my man. Hey, thanks for having me. Glad to be here. No, thank you for your time. I am super excited because the goal of the show is to bring more tools to the audience so they can take, they can take their companies to the next level. It can be information, it can be tools, it can be whatever it helps them so they, 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 can, they can grow. And I think it was really important to have you in the show, Dylan. I love it. I love it, man. Let's rock and roll. Let's do it. Before we start, hey fam, don't forget to subscribe to the channel. I am uploading a, a new episode every week. So if you want to keep up to date with everything that I'm posting, go subscribe. I will appreciate. I, we, we all need followers and I need motivation so, to keep going. Now, let's get it on, fam. Dylan, we like to tell the stories in the show. We want to start to know about you. Who are you? How did you start in the roofing industry? Um, first, who are you? Who are you, Dylan? That's great. So I'm one of the owners of the Limitless Roofing Group, and uh, we created a, a buying group or a group purchasing organization to help make roofers more profitable. And we also host trainings and uh, masterminds to help them master their craft. So we tell people when you join our group, we are going to make you more profitable and we're going to make you a wiser, smarter business owner too. Okay. Okay. Dylan, where are you from? What's your expertise? What's your business expertise? How do you yeah, end so, this in Limitless? Yeah, no, I thank, thank you for asking. I, uh, I actually grew up in the Houston, Texas area. I was actually just okay. back down there over the weekend and um, right. there was too many jellyfish floating in the water for my little girls to go swimming. But but uh, grew up in the Houston area and then moved up to Dallas in 2009 okay. uh, to actually to go to Dallas Theological Seminary. So really didn't have any plans to get in the roofing industry. I thought I'd be preaching at a church somewhere. But then got kind of led into the business world. And uh, I've been in a few different industries. I've been in the digital marketing industry, the multifamily industry. Uh, but prior to getting into roofing, I was in healthcare. And I was uh, with a technology and consulting company that worked with doctors all over the US. And that's where I got exposure to buying groups because in healthcare, they're everywhere. Doctors are really good about coming together to help one another. And I think it's because most physicians, like if you go to a doctor's office, that's their own business. And these doctors, these men and women, none of them took a single business class in medical school. So then they start their medical practice and they realize they have a lot of challenges on the business side of things. 
And so they have these big uh, buying groups that help them share best practices and help them get better, you know, programs with manufacturers and suppliers and stuff like that. And um, and uh, so then when I got into roofing, I started as actually in sales, but I started asking uh, people like, hey, where where are the buying groups in roofing? And everybody was saying, well, what what do you mean? What buying groups? And so that kind of kind of was a light bulb moment for me. Okay, who who told you that, Dylan? Who? Yeah, so when Limitless started, you know, I'm, I'm an entrepreneurial guy and I love leadership. I've got a degree in organizational leadership um, in my undergrad. And so we actually started CEO groups or, or Matt, we call them masterminds now. But we started asking our CEO group members, uh, members of Limitless a couple of years ago and just said, hey, have you ever been a part of a buying group? Here's the basic premise. Here's the model like I saw in healthcare. Have you ever been a part of a group like this that helps you make money and helps you learn together? Uh, and everybody said no. And so we started asking our members, okay, well, if we created one, would you want to join? And everybody said yes. <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. I have I have seen other huge opportunities like that one in the roofing industry, man. It's incredible. It's incredible. And, and this is one of the topics that I want to talk with you, that you have all these expertise in different industries and you have seen seen it all now when you come to this industry but i'm gonna talk with you about like this about this in a little bit i have a question for you dylan um, about what you are saying why the doctors they don't go alone because in the roofers roofers i feel that there is a lot of pride in themselves that they go like dude i'm a roofer and i can do this and i'm gonna do it with myself why is important to get together See, that's the big difference between doctors and roofing owners. To be a doctor, it's all based on academics. You have to make really high test scores, and that determines what kind of doctor you can be. Most people don't know that. You, you can't just decide, well, I'm going to be an eye doctor. You have to make extremely high test scores to be an eye doctor. And a lot of do people, a lot of doctors or guys going, guys and gals going to medical school, they'd love to be an eye doctor because you typically work nine to five. You don't work on weekends. It, it's it, it, high revenue. Well, you have to be one of the brightest minds in medical school to do that. So when you become a doctor, it's all academics. It's all classes. It's basically how to take care of a patient. But then you go and you start your practice and you're in a business. Mm -hmm. You're seeing patients, you're billing them for your services. You're billing insurance companies. I mean, if you think dealing with insurance companies is bad in, in the world of roofing, let me tell you something. It is so complicated and, and challenging in the medical world. I mean, it's just brutal. Um, and so a lot of these physicians, they, they get into practice and they experience burnout because they're so stressed out over the business side of things and the cash flow and the finances and trying to hire the right office staff and grow their practice. And then they have to figure out the marketing side and all these things that they started, you know, they started forming in these big buying groups. And, and one of the reasons is because just like in roofing, uh, there's really three major national suppliers in healthcare. Doctors buy from one of those big three, just like in roofing. Um, but the difference is, is doctors form these big groups and they would they would go to their suppliers and say, hey, how can we form a great relationship with you? And they'd create kind of special deals. But then the, these buying groups would also do like quarterly, monthly and yearly trainings. And these doctors would just come and share best practices. And at these events, it's not like um, industry influencers up on stage. It's other doctors on stage saying, hey, here's how we streamline our office practices. Here's how we figured out our insurance billing. Here's how we train our office managers. It's all like, and, and they're open and willing to share because since it's all based on academics, a lot of doctors don't have that like entrepreneurial drive and that energy and that intensity. Whereas a roofing owner, you don't have to go to college or medical school or even get a master's degree. It's not based on academics at all. It's based on grit. And a lot of it is dri driven by sales ability. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of roofing owners were just great sales guys that realized I can do this too. I'm going to start my own roofing company. Um, so yeah, there's just a huge difference to think in the mindset and in the culture of, even though doctors are business owners, you know, I think that they, they know that they don't know how to run a business. Mm, got it. Hey, it's funny how, like, if you ask somebody like, Hey, what are the similarities between doctors and roofers or the opportunities? 
similar opportunities and is this man that they are so focused in what they do because of different situations that they have the same opportunities and probably uh, different industries are going to have are going to suffer with the same situation that they are working they don't they are not working together and they have they need to grow they need to go to the next level and it's harder for them so dylan one question how did you start in roofing man like how did you did how did you do that switch between uh, uh medical and then roofing yeah you know it's kind of a it's a it's a it, it's a, it was a challenging season where I was in the healthcare consulting and technology and uh, I was doing very well uh, as far as, you know, numbers and, and all this stuff, but I wanted to get into real estate and I'd been studying real estate for about a year. I found somebody who was starting up a multifamily investing company. Um, she had a really good track record over the last 15 years or so of uh, buying up, you know, over 3000 multifamily units. She'd made her investors money, but she had gotten out of that space for a few years to do some other things and she was getting back into it. And so uh, I wanted to get out of the healthcare world. I wanted to get into real estate, get into multifamily investing and really just ignored some, some yellow flags and maybe even one or two red flags and didn't do my due diligence on this person. And uh, so got into business with her and man, I lasted four months and about two months in i started to realize this is not good like this person is looking at these spreadsheets on these properties and you know when you're buying a multifamily property for 20 million dollars you basically take that and you put it into a business model you put it into a business big spreadsheet that says this is what this thing the money this can make over the next five years and she was starting to get confused over her own spreadsheets and i was just like oh my gosh what is happening here and so i started looking for something else um, a buddy of mine owned a roofing company okay. and his wife and my wife are really good friends and he's, you know, living a comfortable lifestyle and taking off every, you know, for the whole month of December every year and going fishing, going hunting. And I'm like, man, Miller's got it pretty good. <laughs> and so I reached out to Miller and I said, Hey man, I'm in kind of a period of transition and I'm looking at my options and would love to have lunch with you and talk about roofing. And I just kind of wanted to learn from him about roofing. And then he said, I'll tell you what, man, why don't you start doing sales for me? I'll teach you everything you need to know. And a, in a year or two, if you want, you can go start your own roofing company. He said, well, but we'll leave it open-ended. You do whatever you want and let, you know, be happy to have you. And that's, that's what got me started. Damn. Hey, congratulations, man. Because it's funny, like how our, our it's, it's a little bit, it's interesting how when you are starting a project and doesn't go well and everything blocks in front of you like then this is the end you don't know what to do and then like um you let the time and the patience do the work and then you have this opportunity that probably you never thought that you were going to be in the roofing industry right like coming from digital marketing medical and all these high-end like industries and uh, like how was that change man yeah, that's true. I, I never thought while I was in healthcare, oh, I wonder what roofing is like. Um, <laughs> Nobody, yes, man. <laughs> yeah, yes, that's funny. I and, and the big, I think the big change was when I got into roofing. Uh, you know, I used to when I was in digital marketing, I worked for a company and we sold we sold uh, basically franchises, kind of like a McDonald's. You could mm -hmm. own a market for our company. You basically would sell the services, and all the fulfillment would happen at the from the mother company. So I went to all these franchise expos, big trade shows where you could buy everything from Chick-fil-A franchises to bombshells to you name it, any kind of franchise you could dream of, they were selling them there. So I would I would go and talk to all these other, you know, uh, franchise companies and say, okay, what does this one cost? What's the estimated return? What's the overhead look like? What's the marketing? What's the competition? So I got to analyze a ton of different business models. So when I got into roofing, right away i was like wow this is an amazing business model you're offering a service everyone needs everyone has a roof over their head it's a very simple thing that you're selling you're selling a roof in residential you're selling a shingle roof mostly and in texas a lot of it you're selling a roof with uh, insurance money and you're you're basically you're offering something for the price of a deductible 
but even in retail markets, you've got financing and stuff. So I was kind of impressed by how simple the business model was and also the profit margins. I mean, I can just tell you compared to other industries, the profit margins in roofing are, are very healthy. So I liked it right away. I thought this is a great industry, but I also saw there's a lot of room for improvement as far as like best business practices and stuff like that. And that's how you decide that instead of opening your roofing company, you went to go all in with Limitless. That's right. Yeah, I started selling roofs for Miller and okay. uh, and that was going well. And uh, but just being entrepreneurial and creative, I thought, you know, one of the one of the things I like the most is leadership, connecting leaders. And so we started kicking the idea around of CEO groups. And again, in the more white collar world, you know, CEO groups, or they call them peer advisory groups are, are very well known. And I've been a part of them before. And there's big companies like Vistage Worldwide. I think they've got over 25,000 members okay. that are all CEOs of different companies all around the world. So we saw that as a big opportunity. You know, what, what if we bring roofing owners together uh, to learn from one another, just to share, hey, this is my biggest challenge. Here's where I'm at. Can you guys help me and, and have every other owner in that CEO meeting ask questions, give feedback and shine with the light of their knowledge and their experience to help that member break through a plateau. And so we started with that and uh, really enjoyed it. Hey, that's awesome. That's awesome. Why? Because the problems and the challenges that a business owner has and it's similar depending the the phase or the stage that you are on business. And if you if you are comparing the challenges that a roofer in similar stages has, it's like the same, like they are pretty similar. So putting them together and teaching them one to each other, man, is like a, it can be like the difference between success and failure in a roofing company for sure. Yeah, and I don't know why people wouldn't reach out and ask for advice when it's there to to have. You know, I think so many people are operating in isolation, just trying to do the grind or the whatever. And and I just I don't understand that mindset. I think it's very limiting, um, and I think that uh, it's it's unusual because in any other space, like if you wanted to learn jujitsu, you're not going to learn jujitsu on your own. Mm -hmm. by watching YouTube videos, you're going to go to a gym and learn from teachers and you're going to grapple with other people. And you're, if you're a blue belt and you want to get to the brown belt level, you're going to have to grapple with brown belts. You know, if you want to learn piano, you're going to take piano lessons. You're not going to try to wing it. Um, and I, and it's weird to me that there's, there's a lot of owners in roofing that, you know, you're, you're basically trying to climb Mount Everest alone. I mean, growing a business is like, doing a very scary, challenging mountain climb, but nobody climbs Everest alone. They climb in teams and they do that to protect themselves and to ensure their success. And uh, there's just no need for anybody to grow their business in isolation when there's these communities available, whether it's ours or somebody else's. Exactly. Yeah, we're, we are not in the 70s or in the 60s anymore, right? Yeah, actually yeah. there is like yours, there is, like, yeah, there is limitless, but there is other masterminds that people can join, you know, like even because probably someone can say like, oh, I don't like yours or I don't like the other one. Uh, dude, like for all, everyone who is listening to my recommendations, Dylan, so you know, is try everything. Try So, you know, a little bit of everyone because everyone has something to teach, but do something. Do something. I don't care if you go whoever you go, but join a training, take a course, join a mastermind, but do something for you and your and your and your health and your business and everything. But yeah, this is this is great, Dylan. So Dylan, masterminds and groups and getting together with CEOs is one of your um of the benefits of, of joining Limitless, correct? That's right. What else do we have? So we can offer the audience so they know like, hey, I want that. Like, what, what else do we have? Yeah. So the other challenge that we saw in the in the roofing industry is there's just a lot of isolation as far as roofing owners working together to have buying power. Wow. You know, in healthcare, every doctor that you've ever been to 
belongs to a buying group. They have buying groups for foot doctors, buying groups for arthritis doctors, buying groups for neurosurgeons. I mean, every kind of healthcare you can imagine, there is a group, some hundreds or even thousands of physicians in these groups. And so we, when we started asking around, hey, have you ever been a part of a buying group? Have you been a part of a buying group? No, what's that? What do you mean by that? I thought, wow, uh, there's an opportunity here. So in healthcare, the buying groups are very simple. They exist to make their members more profitable. It's that simple. They save them money and they help them learn best practices, which enables them to grow more successful businesses. But on the saving side, they would basically go to their suppliers and say, hey, if all of us buy from you or the bulk of our stuff from you and not your competitor, can we form a better relationship? Can we have more loyalty from you? You're going to get loyalty from us. Okay. So can we have a better price or in some cases, not a price, but maybe a discount program or whatever it might be. And physicians would do that with their suppliers. And uh, they would also do it with any of their vendors, the vendors that they buy supply medical gloves and stuff, not just drugs and medicine, but anything they'd buy for their practice, everything from pins to pills, they would they would create these this buying power in these groups. So we had this idea and uh, and that's what we do. We say when you join our group, we help you maximize your profits and master your craft. We went to SRS distribution with this idea uh, almost two years ago. Okay. The funny thing is, is it just so happened that one of our CEO group members had a roofing supply business in Longview, Texas, and he sold it to SRS. Okay. And in the process, he got to know Dan Tinker and a few of the other key executives at SRS. And he said, you know, I know Dan Tinker and I'd be happy to connect you guys in email and let's just see where it goes. And so he emailed Dan Tinker and said, hey, Dylan McCabe with Limitless has a really interesting business idea. I think you need to check out. And Dan emailed back within 30 minutes. He was on vacation. He emailed back. This is the CEO of an $11 billion a year company. He said, I'd love to meet with you guys. And so I got a two hour meeting with Dan Tinker and a few uh, other executives there at SRS and basically shared this simple idea. We are going to form a group. Our group is going to be devoted to you. We're going to have you as our exclusive supplier partner. We're going to buy as much from you as we can. Um, unless there's a situation where you just can't supply that need. Um, in return, we want a special program for all of our members. And we want to be able to give those guys that are doing, you know, one to five million a year, the chance to have a really strong relationship with you. And as Limitless, we're going to offer a lot of trainings and masterminds and extra added value to kind of give our members a VIP experience. What do you think? And so we kind of went back and forth for two hours and, um, addressed issues, questions, whatever. And, uh, and then we put a deal together. And so now we're the limitless, uh, buying group and we've got a national buying group and, uh, it's still today at the time of the recording of this show, we're one of the only buying groups out there. I mean, I can count on one hand, how many I've heard of, and, uh, I think we'll see more in the future, but for now we're, we're kind of it. This is impressive, man. And that relationship with SRS, I think is super, super, super important because yeah, they are one of the biggest one in the industry. But beside that, they have a lot of support, a lot of support for companies and for roofers that are starting. So Dylan, if I am not wrong, so the group, it is for contractors that are in the, in the first phase of the contractor stage. So from zero to 5 million, you said? Well, no, I mean, we can, I think our biggest member was at 70 million a year in revenue. Wow. But yeah, our, our, I'd say our sweet spot is those guys that are, you know, probably in the 20 million or less uh, okay. annual revenue. Um, okay. And, you know, for guys that are a lot bigger than that, they kind of have a different set of challenges like you spoke to earlier. And there is another buying group that really focuses on those guys, some of the biggest contractors in the U.S., It's a very, very small buying group. Uh, ours is different. Ours is for your your average roofing owner or or general contractor who does roofing. Okay, that's that's super important because that's I think in my community, that's the majority of them are those type those type of roofers, the ones that are starting or even they are not starting that they wanna they are seeing this and they wanna get motivated. So that Dylan, that's why I'm going super deep in this topic like don't think that um 
I'm going just going around, but it is important that my community understand what is a GPO because it can be a good opportunity. I'm sending everybody. So the way the way I'm doing I'm doing it is if if a contractor, a Hispanic contractor comes to me, I always um the, the first homework that they need to do is look at all my Spanish interviews that I have in my show. Then I send them to a school that I have from some um, Mexican guys that they are in the north of the country. They are Colombians, actually. They have a school for contractors that are starting. So they, uh, they, they stop applying, installing roofs, and they can start doing the business. Then um, I, I, I send them to SRS too. It's like, dude, you need to go with SRS. I send them sometimes with all other manufacturers that I know that they have good classes and good, good, good training so they can keep training. But I think your group, it's another good opportunity where they can send those, when we, I can send those contractors that are starting because they come to me and they ask me for a job, man. It's like, dude, Francisco, give me some job, man. Send me some projects. It's like, dude, I don't have projects, man. I wish I have projects to give to all my community, but... The only thing that I have is what I just told you right now is the show is my connections that they are bringing. They are, they are bringing some to the community too, Hispanic and not Hispanic community, you know? So I think this is a good opportunity Dylan, that, and that's why I'm going a little bit deep so they can understand that they ha- this is another type of opportunity in the market so they can grow and they can take their company to the next level. That's great. Yeah, that's I love what you're 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 basically being a really powerful resource for these guys to help get them connected where they need to. That's great. Yeah. And and we love SRS and the the amount of energy and creativity they put into helping their contractors grow is what got us really excited to work with them. And then just the things they offer like ProFund and Roof Hub, these amazing tools. Yeah. I mean, it, it's amazing. We got to see a ProFund demo yesterday. Okay. And I, I mean, I was just like, wow. And they give that to their customers for free. And it's not free. SRS pays the cost. And I mean, you know, we're talking thousands of dollars a year in, in technology and they give it to their customers for free. So yeah, I think if anybody listening to this, if you don't buy from SRS, you need to reach out to your local branch and at least see what they have to offer. You, you will be pleasantly surprised. I'm with you. I agree with you. So um, Dylan, so I feel it's, it's interesting how you and me, we have a similar, similar story because I came from another industry, came to this one, start selling roof exactly as you, the same as you. And then I saw the opportunity too. like, dude, like this industry, because I did that, I compare, I compare industries. Like coming for a, I think that's a huge um, advantage that, people that is coming from another industry or professionals that are coming from an, another industry that come to the to the roofing industry, like they see those opportunities that sometimes people that have been working in the industry for years, they don't see it because for them it is normal to sell and to work the, they, the way they haven't done it. So Dylan, here is my, my question regarding this topic. What were the main difference that you find out? Uh, I think you said some or like, what are some of the weaknesses? And if you already said, said them, like you can tell me like that you already said, said, said them, like what are the weaknesses that you see between these industries and the strengths too, like besides, besides the one that you said? Yeah, I think the biggest strength that I see in roofing, especially owners and roofing companies, is just the sales. I mean, you, you've got three parts to, to every business. I don't care what industry you're in, whether it's IT or finance or uh, you you own a gym, fitness gym, or you run a roofing company or plumbing, whatever. There's three parts to every business. You got your sales and marketing arm, your operations, and your finance. Okay. And so all three of those have to be strong, right? If your sales is weak, your ops aren't going to have anything to to do, and your finances are not going to come because you're not making sales. You don't have cash flow. If your operations are weak, your sales might be strong, but then you can't fulfill and you can't keep customers. You're going to have all, just a whole host of problems. And of course, if your financial arm, your business is weak, you can end up bankrupt. Uh, so all three need to be healthy. But what I've seen in roofing is that it's very strong on the sales side. I mean, most roofing companies are sales organizations that have learned how to scale sales teams until you get bigger to where you've got 50 employees and 
more than one location. Well, okay, now you're you really are a full blown organization, and you've got personnel challenges and organizational challenges more than just sales. But、um, I think the sales part is the strongest because it's an easy thing to sell to sell a roof. I've sold、mm-hmm. so many different things over the last twenty years, and I think selling a roof is one of the easiest things I have ever sold. But I think the biggest weakness to the roofing industry is I meet so many owners, especially here in Texas, that started out as sales guys and thought I could do this better, or I could make more money, or I could do this too. I'm going to go start my own roofing company. So they do that. They get up to one to two million in sales. Then they start hiring more sales guys and growing a company. And now they deal with this massive gap in knowledge. And experience between being a sales guy and the CEO of a company, there's a huge gap in knowledge and experience, and that gap brings pain. I mean, there are challenges that will keep you up at night. You know, you're going to be waking up at 2 a.m. wondering what's happening with your accounts receivable. Is your sales guy about to leave? You know, is your office manager doing things right? Should you have done more with that supplement?、Uh, it's just so many challenges, and I, I think that's the biggest weakness is most roofing owners. Really started as great sales guys,、um, and they they have a kind of a nasty wake up call when they start running their own companies. Yes, I have seen that too. So, Dylan, I love what you just explained right now about the three pillars: sales, marketing, and, and operation. So, Dylan, there is one opportunity that I'm seeing in the Hispanic roofing community that they are they compete with each other. Comparing themselves, who is the best installer? What do you think about that? Like they are,、oh, I'm the best one in qual- best quality. I'm the, you know, what, like what do you think is the be- the main opportunity if you focus that much on the installation instead of on focusing on the business, on sales and marketing? Like going a little bit a step a step forward of what you said that you are like you you are good in sales. You are not here. You are in installation. What do you think about that? Yeah, that that's a good question. I mean, obviously, if you don't install a roof well, you're going to have leaks. You're going to have problems. You're not going to get good referrals.、Um, and so, I think that's key. But I mean, let's face it: every roofing owner says we focus on craftsmanship. Every single one. I mean, it says it on their website. They say it during the sales process, or they'll say, you know, we're. We're aligned with this manufacturer, and we're certified, and we're you know we're going to do a stellar job. Every, everybody is saying that they, you know, we use ice and water shield even when you don't have to. All this stuff, almost everybody says that kind of stuff. So I think the bar is set there. You you need to do a great job. You need to install well, or it's gonna you know it's gonna backfire on you.、Um, but、uh, once you've got that down, you really have to know how to do sales and marketing and operations and finance. You have to know how to keep a strong cash flow. Or you're going to be, you know, if you're, the key is how much money have you collected, not how much money、uh, have you billed. And a lot of guys just have that really messed up. Guys are waiting on checks for three to six months. Man, that's terrible. That, that's another opportunity, Pay, like、um, yeah, payments, payments. But that's another like no, I love it. I love it. Yes, I always recommend that, and I, I'm asking you that so the community can listen from another, from not not for me. Like you know, like I tr- some of the questions that I、uh, that I um, um that I make in in my show they are sometimes similar, so they can see that it's not like only me or only one person. It's like everyone is recommending you recommending you that that is focus on the business and not in the quality and the installation. So Dylan, continuing with this topic, they I um I like to talk about this is another question that I I do to all my all my guests. There is entrepreneurs and intrapreneurs. Intrapreneurs, the, do you know, have you heard about that term? No. What is? How do you define that? Intrapreneur, entrepreneur. You open your own business, and and, and the, everybody knows what is that. And there is a trend in the in in the in media that everybody needs to be an entrepreneur, become your own boss, print your time, and it's more in the in the younger generations, you know, and and Instagram. But the entrepreneurs, this is, is this term what they promote that you can be an 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 entrepreneur, but inside someone else's company, you are gonna make even more money that you make、uh, compared if you open your own company. You are gonna sleep at night. 
you are going to like do better things that is, like you don't have to be a, a, your own owner obviously you need a good company where they take care of you they they treat you as a partner so dylan here is the question do you think entrepreneurship is for everyone or do you recommend like if you don't know what you are getting into better to work with someone else because it is not going to be a good right You know, I think it just depends on the person. Some of us are just naturally, our personalities are naturally more, we, we are feel way more excited about being an entrepreneur. I've got my own business. Yes, I have all the risk, but I've got all of the reward as well. Some of us get really excited about that. Some of us are terrified by that. So if that's scary and you are what they, you know, it's like they say risk averse, you don't like risk, you want things steady and stable, then yeah, you need to be an entrepreneur and you need to thrive at a company where you're at and you can be a great servant leader at that company. You can offer a ton of value and work your way up and be a valuable asset. Maybe if you do a good enough job and become, um, become priceless in the eyes of the owner, maybe they'll give you some equity in the company. Um, and some people are need to stick with that. For me personally, I've always had a problem with working really hard to make someone else a lot of money. I just, I'm naturally wired or designed to be creative and to create my own things. And so for me, it's way easier and less stressful to build my own thing um, and, and have control over it and not have to ask for permission for things or uh, tell other, run my decisions by other people. I mean, I do, my business partner and I, we constantly run our ideas behind one another. Mm -hmm. And, um, but yeah, I think, I think it just depends on you personally. Okay. The, yeah. Dependence uh, depends on each one. So Dylan, I think a way to discover this, if you should open your company or work for somebody else and keep preparing yourself, everything could be defined in training. So, you know, like, and investing yourself, investing in, in ourselves. So you can become like, you know, you have more knowledge and you can take better decisions. Talking about the GPO group, the roofing GPO, um, do you offer trainings too? We do. So every month we offer two trainings. One is a mastermind where you get to network and connect with other roofing owners. And the format is the same every month. We have what we call a man in the middle, So if that's you, you could say, hey, I've, I've got my roofing company. You know, we're doing about $2 million in revenue. I want to get up to $5 million in revenue next year. Here's my challenges. I've got some turnover in my sales team. Here's what I'm doing. You kind of explain for five minutes or 10 minutes what you're doing. Then I facilitate it and every other member in that mastermind meeting, and this is all done on Zoom. Every other person gets to ask questions and give feedback. And the whole goal is that we we call it shining. Everybody gets to shine with the light of their knowledge and experience on your situation so that by the end of the meeting, you have some solid steps to take to break through that plateau. And so instead of you operating in isolation and you making this climb all by yourself, now you have kind of a board of directors, other members with you, and you're tackling those challenges together. Um, so we do that once a month. And then the other thing we do is we bring in guest speakers to do expert level trainings wow. uh, for our members. So like next month, we've got a training on cash flow management. Wow. And the guy that's doing the training has a company uh, called KFE Solutions. And all they do is outsourced CFO. So if you can't hire a chief financial officer, but you need one, you can hire his company and they will completely revolutionize the way you as a roofing owner see the financial side of your business they'll teach you how to do cash flow forecasting i mean they'll do it for you but they'll help you learn about it too uh, they will make that financial side of your business really strong so we have a training uh, next week for 90 minutes on how to manage your cash flow okay um, and even as an owner how to do cash flow forecasting on a sheet of paper, just very, you know, how to do your own little kind of back of the napkin cash flow forecasting. Nine times out of 10 roofing owners I talk to, if I say, hey, can you do a cash flow forecast on the back of a napkin? The answer is no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay, okay. And I can imagine that you change the topics every month, every month. Yes. So every month, every, you know, you got three months in every quarter. So 
Um, every quarter, we've got three uh, trainings, one each month. One of the trainings is on sales and marketing. The next month is operations and the next month is finance. So all throughout the year, you're strengthening those three key areas of your business. Hey, that's awesome, man. And we, we just talked about that and, and about the pillars. And so you give those trainings. They, they are included. That's correct. That's yeah, awesome. well, we have two we have two membership levels. We have a basic okay. level and a premium level. Got and it. So to get access to the masterminds and the trainings, that's a premium membership. Okay, okay, okay. If not, and can you tell me the, the, the prices so all the community knows? Yeah, so it's we've lowered the barrier to entry. We're actually very affordable. It's $1,500 a year to have a basic membership. Okay. Not a month, a year. And then it's $3,000 a year to have a premium membership. And again, that's not a month. And there are some coaching organizations out there that you're going to pay $2,500, $3,000 a month for uh -huh. their coaching oh, and yeah. training. Yeah. Us, for an entire year, you get access to all these great resources. Yeah, that's that's awesome. And yeah, and yes, really good, um, a like, uh, yeah, uh, cost. So Dylan, and okay, you become a member, probably one of the questions, this, I, I have this question and probably the, the community have it too. How does that work? How does that relationship? Okay, I got that, uh, I'm part of the group and I go to SRS and what do I have to tell? Do, do, like, do you give me, like, how does that work? The relationships? Yeah. Sure. So it's real easy to sign up. You you can go to our website and just click join now. Um, you'll have to put in some basic business information uh, and then you can check out and pay. As soon as you do that, a thank you page comes up and you schedule your onboarding call. And okay. during that onboarding call, um, we give you access to your membership portal. And in that portal, you get all of the discounts and the deals we have. You also get to see the access to the training and then SRS distribution automatically gets an email saying, Hey, this is a limitless roofing group member, mm -hmm. flag them in your system. And now SRS knows you're part of the limitless discount program and you get, you know, special treatment from us internally at limitless. Um, so you've got a very streamlined experience, but the cool thing is nothing changes on your end. If you're buying from SRS, you don't have to change the way you order materials. You don't have to change your sales rep, your brand, none of every, nothing changes. It's just that now you're a, a member of Limitless and you get kind of a, like a VIP treatment. Ooh, I like, I like to be VIP, man. Yeah. <laughs> hey, so Dylan, okay. I love it, man. I love it. This is a great opportunity for the community, for the Hispanic community, Latino community. We have talked about this. SRS, they have a huge program for the Latino community. They are other companies that are that are joining this trend, this new this trend that is coming in the market, and I think every every time is getting um, stronger and stronger. In which way are you seeing that um, Limitless is going to be supporting the community or working with them, or wh what are you seeing that the group is the group is developing for them? Yeah, that's that's a good question. Yeah, SRS with their para Latinos. I mean, they're it's amazing what they are doing over there to support um, Latino roofing owners and and just the whole community. And even at the IRE Expo last week, they had a huge tent outside with a, a band and food. They had tacos and it was it, the the food was great. They had drinks. They had music, and the whole tent was full of uh, Latino roofers. And so the year before that, it wasn't. You were. And so there's been a big shift taking place now. And SRS is putting a lot of time and money into helping the Latino community grow and become more uh, successful in business and stuff. So we're working on it. I mean, that's one of the reasons I wanted to connect with you because I respect your, um, your work in, in the roofing industry. I respect uh, your skills and your knowledge and stuff like that. And we're looking to make more connections with people like you who are just doing great things that we can align with because it's all about the, the people you align with and whatever you do. It's so much more important than what you are actually doing. You know, I would much rather work with you and just, you know, if we were picking up trash together, I'd rather be doing that with you than with somebody who is just worthless and doesn't have anything helpful to, to do with anybody or helpful to say. So We want to align with people like you. And then we're we're looking out right now for a bilingual sales rep. We don't have one today at the time of the recording of this show. 
Um, but that's harder to find than you would think. But we're we're looking for a bilingual bilingual account representative. So that uh, if we do have people who want to join Limitless, but they don't speak English, uh, we can help them. Today, we can't. We don't have anybody on our staff that, that speaks Spanish. Um, so, but that's in the works. So if you know of anybody, let, you know, please connect us. <laughs> no, and if everybody's listening from this opportunity about like, if you are a bilingual and you are looking for the, for this, for an S, for a, if you are looking for a position in a good company, fam, this is the chance. Now, let me tell you something, Dylan. That position that you are looking for, it's a position that costs, it, like it's going to be really hard to find because everybody's looking for that position, you know? Right. Like most, what I'm seeing in, the, in, in both, um, both communities, like either they speak English or they speak Spanish. Actually, I, that's the reason why I haven't given you like my, my, my referrals for that position. I haven't given it to you because I don't have any, man. The ones that I have in like in the Hispano community, they don't speak English that well. And the ones that are the ones that speak English, they don't speak Spanish that well. You know, the ones that are in the middle, they all have jobs and really good jobs. Why? Because everybody's looking for them. Actually, that's a position, Dylan, that that's one of the challenges you know you if, if we talk about challenges that roofing companies are having right now we can be talk we can have a, a podcast from a, a full podcast talking about opportunity actually we, we are doing it right now but one of them is is this position dylan is the project manager that works with the with the with the high with the high positions with the c-suite position and works with the with the crew labor that's this so true position, this position is like everybody needs them. The one that doesn't have it, it's it's a mess, man. It's a jungle. It's a jungle, and I have seen them. I have seen both sides, and they make a big difference. So I will keep looking for that position for you because they are um, because yes, that you are what you are doing. You are joining this this um, this purpose or why that is to join to support our community the way i see it is like if we support the community we are going to leverage the the whole industry because we are the foundations of the industry and that's what i always tell them like guys your position is the most important and you don't see it like that you take it like you are like them you are like we can take the the industry to the next level so that's why um it is super important that you guys are doing this. That's why it was important to have you here to talk about this. Um, and yes, that position is going to be hard, but um, I'm glad that you commented in the show. So if somebody listening to us, actually, that's what I'm hoping that this shows in English. The ones that listening to it are the ones that are the, the Spanish uh, Latinos that speak English and Spanish in the same time. So it's even better. It's lower. I'm going to tell you the truth. The people who are listening to the English podcast, they are they, it's a low, lower audience compared to the is, Spanish podcast because in the Spanish podcast, it's a little bit similar than the Limitless group. We are the only one and unique one. Like, there is no other Spanish podcast in the market. So in that wow. one, yeah, it's incredible, man. It's I, 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 am, I am like surprised with all this, you know? So uh, actually you are lucky and uh, this is only because I like you and I wanted to share this, but I'm going to start um, doing even less and less um, interviews in English, only the ones that are like really important and they are having like a good cause for the community. Mm. Yes. So um, Dylan, talking about contractors that are starting including the Latino community and the, not the Latino community. What recommendation can you give to someone that is starting besides joining the Limitless group? What, are, what opportunities are you seeing that they need to work on? I, I think the biggest opportunity is I would talk to your supplier or your, uh, your manufacturer rep and say, what kind of resources are there for me to grow as a business owner? I want to connect with some other roofing owners 
I want to just go to lunch with some guys, maybe one other owner who's two or three steps ahead of where I'm at. And I just want to ask some questions. I'm not sure if I'm doing it right or not, you know, and just be proactive about connecting with people. Don't be reactive. Don't wait for people to come to you. You know, I, I grew up in a situation, I grew up in a broken home, um, you, you know, without a dad around and uh, never had, you know, we grew up very poor. So I've never been in a situation where the stuff I needed was just given to me. I always had to go ask for it, go find it, go seek it out. And so when I wanted to become an entrepreneur, I started reaching out to guys that were entrepreneurs saying, hey, can I have, can we have lunch? Can I buy you lunch and just ask you some questions? And I think you need to do that if you're starting a roofing business or you're young in the roofing industry, or even if you're not, um, you need to be connecting with other people and asking uh, if you can learn from them. And uh, that would be my biggest piece of advice I could offer anybody, whether you get that from your supplier or from a manufacturer, you need to connect with other people and sharpen your saw. It's like the old proverb that somebody asked President Abraham Lincoln one time, if you had to chop down a tree, what's the first step you take? And he said, I'd sharpen my saw. You yeah. need to work smarter, not harder. Yes, 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 I agree. Say, Dylan, so I think we are, we are, um, we're in the end of the show. I'm going to give a message, um, another call to action. Fam, share if you like the show and you want to share this information share it so more people can benefit of this valuable information and they can know more about limitless group and before we go dylan i want you i don't know if you can give us where can they contact you i know you already said it but it's important to say it again like give your last message so all the community can like know again what what is all this and what and where can they contact you and join you Absolutely. Thank you so much for, for having me on. If, if anybody wants to learn more, just go to LimitlessRoofingGroup.com. That's LimitlessRoofingGroup.com. You can learn about our group. You can see some member testimonials and you can book a strategy call with us just to learn more about how we can help you become more profitable as a roofing owner. We'd, we'd love to serve you. Awesome. Pam, I'm going to leave all the information in the in the in the description so you can get all the all the website and go subscribe. Dylan, thank you very much for this class explaining us what is what is a roofing group because probably they they are going to start seeing it more and more. Obviously it's important that they know that you are the the first one and the only one right now in the market and you already have all the deals. Thank you very much. Pam, thank you very much for one more one more episode in your show conversation with leaders by roofers going digital tv peace Para mí la educación es sumamente importante, obviamente dejando de cualquier cosa aparte, pero cuando yo conocí esta industria, en realidad, o sea, ahí es donde tú te puedas pensar y dices, wow, ¿por qué no la empecé antes? O sea, o, o en realidad, si yo, yo, me, yo seguí lo que seguí en la carrera de justicia criminal es porque yo quería hacerme, yo quería hacerme detective y trabajar eh. para el equipo de policía y toda esa cuestión. Eh, el otro tema es el equipo. Hay una frase que vi que en la guerra es, conoce a tu equipo y conoce tu rival Exacto. con el conoce a tu equipo hay, hace, haces algunos como que ¿qué hace, qué hace Tactical Construction cuando entra un elemento nuevo eh, cómo lo haces y hace cuenta y cómo lo relacionas tú cuando, cuando, cuando estabas en la milicia Entrepreneurship no lo recomiendo no es para todos en mí, en mí, no, no es para todos porque en realidad tú tienes que amar lo que haces a veces tienes que sacrificar cosas de que tal vez no las quieres sacrificar, pero no es para todos. O sea, esto no da para todos. He visto gente que armar y, oh, wow, ya tengo mi compañía. Después de cuatro o cinco meses se cansan. 